Back and forth nail biters come from behind victories. Memorable moments. If a football game can be measured by how tightly contested the game is, the 1971 Lions played one of the most remarkable seasons on record. And if the measure of a great team is its ability to prevail in such games, the 1971 Lions have to rank among the best squads in the 130 year history of Columbia football. In September 1971, hope was high at Camp Columbia as the Lions prepared for the upcoming season. Fourth year head coach Frank Navarro touted the team's experience and the leadership of co-captains Charles Johnson and John Sevcik and predicted the team would contend for the league title. His prediction wasn't far from the truth. In the season opener at Lafayette, the Lions defense set the tone for the whole year, holding the Leopards to only three points. Despite two trips to the Lafayette one yard line, the Lions were kept off the scoreboard in a heartbreaking 3-0 loss. But the 1971 Lions would not let themselves be denied. In the home opener, Columbia faced a Princeton team it had not defeated in 26 years. The Tigers scored first, but sophomore defensive back Ted Gregory gave the Lions the lead late in the first quarter with a 56-yard interception return for a touchdown. And on offense, Don Jackson completed 13 of 18 passes, including a 24-yard touchdown to Captain John Sepsik to give the Lions a 22-14 lead. The Lions held off a late Princeton charge, giving the Lions a memorable 22-20 victory, the first of many dramatic wins on the season. The following week at Harvard, the Lions came up just a hair short in a 21-19 loss. But the next week, against the Yale Bulldogs, the momentum and the season changed. Yale held a 14-0 lead in the third quarter. The Lions pulled within one score with a touchdown pass from Don Jackson to Tom Hurley. With 2.30 left to play, a fumble recovered by Max McKenzie gave the Lions a chance. Jackson completed a 27-yard pass to Parks to reach the Yale 7-yard line. And on third and goal at the 7, Jackson found his high school teammate, Bill Irish, in the end zone, and the Lions were within one, 14-13. Instead of settling for the tie, the Lions went for the W. In the huddle, Jackson called the 59 counter option. Sefcik took the pitch, then lobbed the ball over the charging Yale defenders and found Mike Jones in the end zone for a 15-14 Columbia triumph. Next, the Lions traveled to New Jersey to face a physical Rutgers squad. Trailing 10-7 at the half, the Lions would rally again. After a Jackson to Jones touchdown, Paul Kellyades booted a 33-yard field goal late in the third quarter to give Columbia a 17-10 advantage, and they would hold on for the win after a blocked extra point in the closing minutes. After a tough game against Cornell and All-America running back Ed Marinaro, the Lions were re-energized by 20,000 fans at Baker Field as they took on undefeated Dartmouth. The teams battled back and forth for three quarters, and the Lions found themselves down 29-28 in the closing minutes. But with just 48 seconds left on the clock, Paul Kellyades kicked an end-over-end 34-yard -end field goal to hand Dartmouth its first loss in two years, 31-29. Amazingly, the game marked Columbia's eighth consecutive game, decided by three points or less. Against Penn, sophomore George Georges ran for one score and Don Jackson threw for another as the Lions easily handled the Quakers 17-3 in their home finale. And in the final game of the season against Brown, the Lions trailed 6-3 at halftime, but exploded for 21 unanswered points in a 24-6 triumph. On the season, Columbia finished 6-3 and 5-2 and and in the Ivy League, just one game behind Ivy League co-champions Cornell and Dartmouth. Just as impressively, they were clutch when it mattered, 4-1 and one in the five games decided by two points or fewer. The Cardiac Kids, as they became known to their supporters, kept fans on the edge of their seat every Saturday. They packed the stands and won followers on campus and in the media. They played for each other. The 1971 Lions knew they could compete with anyone. They knew they could find ways to win, and they did. Since becoming the director of athletics at Columbia, I've often been told numerous stories about this wonderful team. The successes of the Columbia football team of 1971 are testament to teamwork and togetherness. The 1971 Lions show us all what is possible for football at Columbia. We can reach those heights again. Two years ago, we hired a head coach who we believe will lead the Lions to victory. And we know that with teamwork and dedication, all of us, fans, friends, coaches, student athletes, administrators, and alumni can help the Lions in their quest to achieve excellence. The men of 1971 achieved greatness because of teamwork and togetherness. 
With your support, we know the Lions will be at the top of the Ivy League again.